สนินไฟล์ลอ All right, uh, Kato. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that we can be here together to worship together at the beginning of this new Chinese year. And God, how what a blessing it is when the brothers come together, when the sisters come together, when we dwell in unity together. Despite all the things happening outside, Lord, that we've decided to come together, how good it is and how much it pleases you. So thank you, Lord, that we can be here. And we thank you, Lord, that it's not just us here, but Lord, that you are here with us right now. We thank you that you're here in this place. I pray, Lord, that you would just be with us right now as the word goes out, Lord. That by your Spirit it would hit our hearts, and Lord, that it would renew us to be more like Jesus and give us strength for this coming year. Uh, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hear the encouragement from Jesus today for you from Galatians chapter six, verse nine, which says this: "Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap." If we do not give up, Amen, Amen. So hold hold on to that message today, brothers and sisters. It's for you. It's from Jesus. It's simple. It's easy. It's something that will stay with you. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. And so these will also be our points for the day. The first point is let us not grow weary of doing good. The second, we will reap. The third, in due season, and finally, if we do not give up. So we're just going to be on this passage the whole time, and I hope that it rests in your heart today. So the first point: let us not grow weary of doing good. We're talking about doing good, and I think sometimes that can be a burden, or we think that doing good is a burden. But I want to release you today. You were made for good works. Good works are not a burden on your life. Good works are a blessing on your life. Ephesians two eight. To ten says this: For you are saved by grace, not by works, so that no man can boast. Don't get me wrong; I'm not saying today that you're saved by good works. That's not what the Bible says. You were saved only through Jesus Christ by grace. But we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. So you're not saved because of your good works, but when you're saved, you're saved for good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So you were made for good works; they're a good thing, and we should do them. And that's actually something that I hope that you're encouraged with today. Don't don't feel like oh I don't know about good works. Do them. God made you to do good works. Be like Jesus. And so, what are good works? Well, very simply, I think good works are being like Jesus. Follow Jesus. Jesus says it very simply: Follow me. Follow me, and as you do that, you'll be doing the things that Jesus is doing, and that's a good thing. But to make that even maybe more practical, what do you need Jesus in your life in order for it to work? So, parents, loving your spouse might be really hard, but remember what Paul says: love your spouse like Christ loved the church. Don't do it on your own strength. Ask Jesus for help, and He will help you do it. Or kids, obey your parents. Like Jesus obeyed his mother, right? Obey your parents. You're like, oh man, obeying my parents is hard. Well, it is, but ask Jesus for help, and He will help you do it. What are you doing right now that you need Jesus for? And if Jesus didn't show up, it would fail miserably. That's a good work in the kingdom of God. Follow Jesus. Depend on Him. This sermon is, I think, a good example. If Jesus does not show up in this sermon, if my words and His words don't come together for you, then it's not a good work. But I pray that that this word, that the words that I'm speaking somehow by the Spirit would be for you, a good thing today, Amen. Amen. So do good works. I'm just releasing you. You were made for those things. Don't don't grow weary in doing good works, as the passage says. Don't grow weary of doing good. But then we have to ask: Well, if we were made for this, why would we grow weary in doing good? Why would we grow weary in doing good? And the answer, I think, is also one that we need to know: that when we do good, we have an enemy who does not like it when we do good things. When we follow Jesus, we are building up through good works God's kingdom, but at the same time, we're tearing down the kingdom of darkness. And so, every time we pray for somebody in Jesus' name, right, we have an enemy who doesn't want that. Every time we're healing people, we have an enemy who doesn't want that. Every time that we're giving, or every time that we're loving, like Jesus. Right, we have an enemy, and as we fight that war, we get weak. We get tired. It's hard work, brothers and sisters. But do not grow weary of doing good. 
And so we need to grow in our spiritual fitness. If I asked you all to go run a marathon right now, I bet there's probably not more than two or three of us who could do it. I can't do it, right? Because we need to grow in our, sp- in our physical fitness if we're going to go do that, right? And it's not going to happen like that. It's going to take maybe a year or two if you're continually training to be able to do it, to not grow weary of running. And so the same way, if we're going to not grow weary of doing good, we need to grow in our spiritual fitness, which is what we've been talking about for the last four weeks here, and I'm concluding today. Let's grow in our spiritual fitness. And I'm going to be talking about this today. I'm going to be using the analogy of the gym, of how we grow physically, and the analogy of doing good works and following Jesus to grow spiritually. So let's take the the gym analogy. Who here wants to be physically fit? I bet probably everybody wants to be physically fit, right? It's easy to want that, right? If we could just hit the button, and then immediately be like, yes, I'm physically fit. We would all hit that button immediately. But who here actually goes to the gym? (laughs) Right? Not as many of us, right? Because going to the gym is hard. We want to be physically fit, but we realize that it's hard work. And then if we're going to do that, we have to, our mind has to tell our body, body, do you want to be healthy? And your body's like, yes. Do you want to be stronger? Yes. Do you want to be beautiful? Yes. Right? Okay. Then we got to go to the gym. And your body's like, okay, we're going to go to the gym. So we go to the gym and we start, we start running, we start lifting weights. And immediately your body does this to your mind. No, stop. I can't do this anymore. Right? It's really hard. Right? Who's had that experience? Yeah, right? It's hard. Right? You're like, you want to do it, but your body doesn't want you to do it. Because your body doesn't know what's best for it. Your body thinks that all this pain is only destroying it. But you know that if you keep doing this, you're going to get stronger. And you're not going to grow as weary. You'll be able to run farther. I'll be able to carry my baby longer. These sort of things, right? That's why I'm going. But I have to keep telling my body, you got to keep going, even though it's hard, even though you want to give up. And so that's the physical side, but we have a gym for our soul, as it were, a place that we can grow stronger spiritually. And as we do that, remember, we're following Jesus, who is the most spiritually buff guy around, right? Jesus is like, bam, he's the Superman, right, when it comes to spiritual buffness. Jesus never gave up. You know that? Jesus never gave up. Jesus never grew weary of doing good. He always obeyed his Father. In John 13, 1, it says this, Now Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He kept going. And Corinthians says it this way, Love never fails. Never fails. It keeps going. That's the love of Jesus for you. Jesus had endless spiritual endurance. He could keep running that race. And we want to be like him. We have to grow in our spiritual fitness. But brothers and sisters, it's hard, right? It's hard, and I know it's hard, and you know it's hard. But here's the advantage that we have. If I wanna train my body, my mind has to tell my body to go work out. But if we believe in Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit with you. And the Holy Spirit's the one that tells you, hey, Stephen, you need to forgive that guy. And and my, my soul's like, no, not that guy. I can't forgive that guy. Can I forgive that guy instead? No, you got to forgive that guy. Ah, right? And the first time, it's hard. Just like the first time we lift the weights, we can't lift as much. But as we keep doing it, we go stronger. If I forgive that guy, if I obey Jesus, if I follow the Spirit, I'm going to grow. And the next time I need to forgive somebody that's hard, it'll be easier. I'm going to grow. I'm not going to grow as weary of doing good. Or when it comes to tithing, the first time the Holy Spirit asks you to tithe, you're going to be like, no, not my money, right? I don't want to give it up. But the second time and the 500th time, by then it's easy, right? Because you've trained your soul to believe the promises of God. It takes time. You need to grow in spiritual fitness. But remember, we're following Jesus, who's the most spiritually fit around. Amen? Amen. So we have got a good example before us. So do not grow weary of doing good. Why? Because you will reap. This is the promise. The commandment of God always is 
partnered with the promise of God. God never tells you to do something if it's not good for you, right? If I went to the gym, but there was no promise, I wouldn't go to the gym, right? If it was like, okay, go to the gym, but there's, there's no reward. You're just going to hurt yourself a lot, right? Nobody would go, right? Nobody would go. There's a promise that if we go, we're going to grow stronger. In the same way, if we do good works, if we follow Jesus, there's a promise. You will reap. That's the promise. But where will you reap it from? If you're following Jesus, it's also going to come through Jesus. Jesus puts it this way. John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. nothing. Did you know that? Apart from Jesus, you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, you will reap exactly nothing in your life. So I want to encourage you today. Don't waste your life. Don't spend your entire life without Jesus. Because if you do that, you will reap exactly nothing. Don't waste your life. Don't work for something that doesn't matter. But instead, follow Jesus and you will reap. That's the promise. Because apart from Jesus, we're not a part of the vine. We're not a part of the tree. But when Jesus comes and the Holy Spirit comes and we receive forgiveness of our sins, we're brought back into God's family, and we're able to do the good things. And yes, what that means, and what the Bible is telling us today, and what Jesus is telling us today, is that even if Bill Gates, with all of his wealth, without Jesus, gave all of it to the poor, it would mean exactly nothing in the kingdom of heaven. And that's hard for us to believe. That's hard for us to see, because we don't see things the way that God does. But that's what Jesus says. But then the reverse is also true. That means that when that, that widow gave those two widow's mites in the temple, it was worth more than anything that Bill Gates could give because he, she gave it with Jesus. And Jesus says she gave more than all of them. Amen? Let that be an encouragement to you today. You don't have to be Bill Gates. You don't have to be overly wealthy. You don't have to have all these things to invest in the kingdom of heaven, to bear good fruit with Jesus. Just give what you have. And that's more than enough for Jesus to turn into something beautiful. Amen? Amen. So what will you reap, right? So our first point is do not grow weary of doing good. The second, you will reap. What will you reap? First, as you do these things, as you follow Jesus, you're going to grow in spiritual fitness. And what does that look like? That's its own fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Who wants more of that in their life? Right? Those are good things. And if you belong to Jesus, you already have all of those things with you right now. But as you follow him, those fruit are going to grow in strength. Right? If you follow Jesus, you're going to be more loving than you are now. As you keep on believing in him, as you keep on becoming more like him, you're going to look more like Jesus. And those fruit are going to mean more to you. So yes, the first thing you will reap is the spiritual strength of Jesus Christ. But that's not it. I do believe that we'll actually reap tangible things as well. But it will look like what the Bible says, which is so much better than what the world is selling us, right? Take Psalm 128, for example. One of the best examples of the blessings of following the Lord. It says this. Uh, yeah, okay. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks according to his ways. And that's what I said, right? If you follow Jesus, this is what we're talking about. If you follow Jesus, listen to what's going to happen you will eat the fruit of the labor of your hands and it will be well with you. Who wants that? Yeah. Right? That's an amazing blessing. And what else will happen? Your wife will be like a fruitful vine around in your house and your children like olive shoots in, in your, around your table. Isn't that, isn't that nice? I just love that image, right? Behold, blessed shall be the man who fears Yahweh. Yahweh bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. That's the kind of blessings that we're going to have as we follow Jesus. It doesn't say anything about 10 cars, but it says something about a good family life. It says something about God being with you. It says something about the goodness of your life, eating the fruit of the labor of your hands, right? That's what happens as we follow the Lord. And I pray that for each one of you, that you'll be blessed in that way. Amen? So that's the kind of fruit that you'll receive. 
right? So first, do not grow weary of doing good. Second, you will reap. But then there's this other part. Yes, that's the promise, but we also are met with the Lord's wisdom. Third, in due season. In due season. So I've been going to the gym since like September, which is like I think four or five months now, right? And, and I, I don't really see a lot of results, <laughs> right? It's like I thought, I thought it would be faster. Yeah, I was like, okay, I feel better. I feel stronger. I can carry my son better, these sort of things. I can run farther. I have more energy. But the actual, like, you seeing me is not that big of a difference at all, right? But here's what I know. In due season, if I keep going to the gym, I will bear the fruit of that effort, right? If I stop going, I'm not going to bear that. It's coming. It's coming. It takes time. That's how these things work. And it's the same thing with the kingdom of God. You're going to bear that fruit of the Spirit immediately, but the tangible result of that might take some time. I've got a friend. Uh, his name is Peter. That's not his real name. We're going to call him Peter. And, uh, and we have lunch every week. Peter's not a Christian. In the last year, he's lost basically everything. Um, he lost his marriage. He lost his job. And now he's living homeless in McDonald's uh, because he's a gambler because he has a huge gambling problem. And he, he gave away everything, and he wasn't willing to be honest with his, with his family, and it just got worse and worse, and it spiraled out of control until he is where he is now. And so we are eating, you know, and we, I, I love the guy. It's a really good conversation. It's a strange time of my week, but I love it. And he, you know, we talk about Jesus, and he's like, Steve, if I believe in Jesus, will everything get better for me? And what he means is right now. Will, will the, you know, will $20,000 fall from the sky? These sort of things. And, you know, as a pastor, I'm in a weird place, right? I'm like, I obviously want him to come to Jesus, and I want to say yes, but I don't, I can't lie to him. I know that that's not going to, maybe it could. Maybe it could happen, but I know it won't. But what I do know is that if he receives Jesus, his heart will change, his soul will change, and he'll be able to begin to bear the fruit of Jesus Christ. He'll be able to look his wife in the face and say, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? He can't do that right now because of his pride. He'll be able to overcome his gambling problem because Jesus will help him do that. He can't do that without Jesus. It's gonna continually destroy his life. And so with Jesus' help through the power of the Holy Spirit, his soul will be strong. And then over time, I believe that he will actually begin to reap the goodness like Psalm 128 is talking about but it's not going to be immediate. And we live in a world of now, 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 right? We live in an instant gratification world, and that's his mindset. I need these blessings now. I need that fruit now. But listen to the, the, the thing that Jesus is saying. In due season, we will reap. And that season might be now, but it might not be. You guys know the story of Abraham. It took Abraham a long time to reap that promise. He received the promise when he was already like 70-something, and he didn't have Isaac until he was 100 years old. I pray that none of you will have to wait that long <laughs> for your season. I hope it won't. But even if you do, believe it. You will reap it in God's time. It must happen because that's God's promise. It might not be your time, but it's a better time. You guys know the story of Joseph, right? Joseph had to go through so much growing of his soul before he was able to reap those benefits in, in being in the palace. He had to be a strong man who could learn to forgive, who could learn to love, who could learn to be humble. And then when he learned it, he was able to reap it. Amen? In due season, you will reap. Maybe you've been praying for your husband for years and you've seen no change. Keep praying. Do not give up. You will reap. If maybe you've been taking care of an elderly parent for years and nobody notices and you're the only sibling who cares, keep going. Jesus, see that. Do not give up. Maybe you have a special needs child. Keep loving them. Jesus sees that. Do not give up, for you will reap those things in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So first, let us not grow weary of, of doing good. Second, we will reap in due season if we do not give up. And I want to spend the rest of the time talking about this. How can we be strong? How can we not give up? How can we keep doing the things that Jesus is asking us to do? Right? If I just stop going to the gym right now, I'm not going to get any stronger. And actually, over time, I'm going to get weaker. 
I need to keep going to the gym to grow in my physical strength. And in the same way, I need to keep going, to not give up, to follow Jesus to grow in my spiritual strength. And so how do we do that? And I want to talk about four parts of your spiritual fitness that will help you continually get stronger and to not give up. And those four parts are this. First, your nutrition matters. Second, your workout routine matters. Third, your workout buddies matter. And finally, your gym membership matters. All right? So first, first is uh, your nutrition matters, right? If I don't eat and I go to the gym, if I don't drink, I'm not going to grow. In fact, I'm gonna get, it's going to be bad. I'm actually going to maybe pass out in these sort of things, right? I need to be eating a healthy, balanced diet. I need to be drinking. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I'm not going to put on anything because I'm not putting anything in. It's the same thing for our spiritual fitness, for growing to be more like Jesus. We need to be in prayer and we need to read his word. It's not an option. It's not an option. If we're not doing that, no matter how much good we think we're doing, we're not in relationship with God. We need to be in relationship with God and that happens through prayer, that happens through reading his word. No matter where you are on your faith journey, we all can grow in both of these things. None of us can say that we know the Bible so well we don't have to read it. <laughs> and none of us can say that we have such a good relationship with Jesus we don't need to pray anymore, right? None of us, you'll never hear anybody say that, right? If you meet people who really love Jesus, they pray, they, I wanna grow in prayer, right? Nobody's ever at the end of their journey in either of these things. Keep growing. And I wanna encourage you, if you wanna grow your prayer life, Pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. If, you're, if you feel like you're all the way at the bottom, just pray that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. That is a strong prayer, and it will teach your soul how to pray. If you're looking for a part of the Bible to read, I'd recommend reading John. If you're looking for something to start, just start reading John or start praying through the Psalms, especially in time like this, the Psalm is beautiful. Let me encourage you to do these things. Also, another thing for your, your spiritual nutrition is communion. Communion is actual food for your soul that the Lord has given to us. That When we take it, we put it into our body and we remember that just like our body needs food to eat, our soul needs Jesus to stay alive, right? That we need to feed our body and our soul. And so that's what communion is. And so I want to encourage you, come next week. Let's do communion together. Be refreshed by God's goodness in your life. Also, parents, uh, fathers in particular, you are the head of your house as Christ the head of the church. I would encourage you, do communion at home. Make your table God's table. It's a beautiful thing to do, to bring God's goodness into your family and to unite your table with God's table. So let me encourage you in that. So first, your nutrition matters. Second, your workout routine matters. And we're gonna talk about this one for a little while. Your workout routine matters, right? When I go to the gym, right, I work out this muscle this day, that muscle this day, but also very importantly, I have rest days. If you go every single day and you work the same thing every day, right, you're actually gonna hurt yourself really badly. You need a cycle, a system, something that helps you continually be healthy. And so I would encourage you, look at your weekly schedule. What do you need to be doing more of and what do you need to be doing less of to stay spiritually fit? Are you serving anybody right now? If you're not, do that. <laughs> you should. Are you giving of yourself anywhere in this world? If you're not, you should. Do those things. They'll be good for you. They'll actually grow your spiritual fitness. I promise. But remember what I said in the beginning. Make sure you're doing it with Jesus. Don't just do for the sake of doing it, right? Follow Jesus. Ask today, Holy Spirit, what are you asking me to do? And I'll obey you. I'll go and do that. I'm going to commit to that thing. I want to love those kids, or I want, to, I want to be able to serve in that particular place. Do that. That's good for you, right? But also, you need to find times to rest. So you need to, you need to have a good workout plan that's both working and resting. We see this in Jesus. A lot of days, he'd go into the city and be healing a lot of people. He'd be talking to a lot of people. He'd be praying for people. But then a lot of days, a lot of Jesus' ministry, he took a huge step back and he went up to mountains and he just was all alone, praying to the Father, refreshing, growing himself. We need the same thing. If we don't do that, we're gonna reach burnout, right? And then we're gonna give up. Find a good balance and be honest with the Spirit where the Spirit's leading you. We live in a world of just go, 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 go. You know this, you live in Hong Kong. You're more important if you're busy, right? That's not Jesus, right? Jesus had time. And there's times where he's walking down the road and he totally changes his plan because the Holy Spirit's leading him to do something else. 
I would encourage you to live a life like that. Don't just do things for the sake of doing things. Make sure that the things that are in your weekly schedule are good things that are worth doing, that will grow you. So the first thing is your spiritual, uh, is, is your nutrition. Second is your workout plan. And the third thing is your workout buddies. You've got great workout buddies here, right? It's so good that we can do this together. Church is good, but you need a kingdom group. Sunday's not enough. If you don't have a kingdom group, I'm encouraging you right now, get a kingdom group. Get a group of people that you're accountable with, that pray for you, that love you, that will keep you going. So like, if you go to the gym, you know that if you work out by yourself, you're not gonna push yourself 100%, right? You need somebody else to see, see you there and help you or spot you and keep you going. Or if you're working out with somebody else, they can also tell you, hey, your back's not quite straight. You kind of need to do a little bit different, right? That's what your kingdom group is. They help us grow. And I do believe that we will grow a little bit if we go alone, but we weren't meant to go alone. We're meant to go with people. So you're gonna grow so much stronger if you're in a small group. So let me encourage you today. If you don't have a kingdom group, find a kingdom group. Go downstairs at the end of the service. Find a kingdom group. Get plugged in. You need one. It's not an option. Also, you have the greatest workout buddy in the universe. You have the Holy Spirit who is with you, right? So remember I said, my mind tells my body to go work out, but the Holy Spirit is your trainer that's telling you what you need to do, right? Follow him wherever he's leading and you will grow so strong as he helps you do the things that Jesus is telling you to do. Without him, you can't do any of these things anyway. So uh, that's important. So first is nutrition. Second is your workout plan. Third are your workout buddies. And finally, we have our gym membership. So gym membership, I go to the 24-hour uh, fitness over by FitFort, and I know that I go there because I give them money. <laughs> that's my gym, right? I know, and it's actually very important that I give them money. If I didn't give them money, I wouldn't go. How do I know that? Because I had a gym for four years in college, and I didn't pay for it, and I never went. <laughs> never, not one time, right? How many of us have a gym at our housing estate or these sort of things, and we just never go, right? We're like, I'll get to it some other time, right? I'll eventually get down there, right? Because we're not invested. We're not giving of ourselves. And because I give them money, my wife also keeps me accountable, right? There's no way she would let me pay and then not go, right? It's very important that I go. Um, so that's why Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so when it comes to church, that's why tithing is important because you're putting a part of your soul in this place and you're saying, I own this. This is mine. I care about this. But not just your money, your time, your love, your attention. That matters. If you're not doing that, you're not gonna grow, it's not just about the church having the things that it needs. It's about you growing spiritually. As you give, you're going to grow. That's why Jesus is commanding it. Okay? So the four things. First, your nutrition. Second, your workout plan. Third, your workout buddies. And finally, your gym membership. One more thing on gym membership. I, I think this is important too. Right? And the, when you do the gym membership, you got to sign the paperwork, right? And, and you're like locked in for a long time and you can't get out. And they're going to keep taking your money no matter what you want. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of what we're talking about here too. Uh, when it comes to following Jesus, you can't be half in. You can't just kind of go to, you can't just kind of follow Jesus. You need to be all in. You can't just work out half side of your body, right? That would be weird. Um, you need to be all in for Jesus. And I want to encourage you today, be all in for Jesus. And Jesus gave us a way of doing that as well. Baptism, where we go all in for Jesus. That just like Jesus died, we die, we come out new in Jesus. And if you've not been baptized, if your kids have not been baptized, I want to encourage you, get baptized. We have a baptism coming up in March, and I want to encourage each one of you, get baptized because it's good for you. You will grow. It'll be a day that you will remember and will keep you moving forward. So these four things, your nutrition, your workout routine, workout buddies, and your membership. These will help you not give up to continually doing the things that God is calling you to do. But remember, the goal is to do them with Jesus. It's not you. It's not on your own. Follow Jesus. Amen? So who wants to be spiritually fit? Yeah? Amen. Amen. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let me pray, and then we'll uh, conclude for the day. So Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, who came for us so that we may be saved. It's not on our works. It's not because of what we've done. But Lord, we thank you that now that we are saved, that we have the Holy Spirit in us, that you've made us anew in Jesus Christ, that we would do good works, that we would bring your kingdom to a world that needs it, that we'd be a light in the darkness, 
because we would need to be that shining city on a hill. May we not hide under the lamp or the light under the bowl anymore, but may we be shining bright in this world that needs it so much. Not that we may be glorified, but that you may be glorified. And so I pray for each brother and sister here today, Lord, that we would not grow weary of doing good. That we would not grow weary of doing the things that you're calling us to do, Jesus, but that we would continually move forward. And I pray, Lord, that we would know that we will reap in due season if we do not give up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.